In this video, I am going to explain how to write Verilog port for 823 encoder. Before going to that directly, let me explain why encoder and how it look like. See, this is the block diagram of 823 encoder. You will give 8 inputs and you will get the encoded data which is of 3 bit. If this is 8 bit, this can be written as 2 cube, right? So, you will get 3 bits of encoded data. So, why this encoder and in what sort of applications you can use this 823 encoder? For example, uh, you think like, uh, let me explain 422 encoder. Uh, there are 4 transmission stations, uh, 4 transmission stations, you call T1, T2, T3, T4 and they are transmitting some data one at a time. Let us uh, think about normal encoder application. Uh, later, we can see about priority encoder also. So, now to represent which transmitter is transmitting data, you want 4 bits. Like if transmitter 1 is transmitting data, then it will be 1 and remaining 3 will be 0. If transmitter 2 is transmitting, uh, in, in this manner, you will get 4 cases. So, instead of 4 cases, you can encode this data into such a way that some application encoder you can use only two bits. For example, if transmitter 1 is transmitting, then you can represent that as 0, 0. Uh, because with two bits, you can get four combinations. So, if transmitter 2 is transmitting, then you can represent that as 0, 1 and 1, 0, 1, 1. So, with these four combinations, you can represent which transmitter is transmitting the data. And at the receiver end, you will do the decoding operation. Uh, that is by using decoder. And then you will again receive the data by the four receivers or internal mapping can be done. So, this can be considered as one raw application of an encoder. Uh, if 8 transmitters, then 8 to 3 encoder you can use. Uh, what if 2 are transmitting at the same time? Then you can establish a priority, the concept of priority, so that which transmitter I should consider first and those type of applications can extend uh, this concept of understanding or you can enlarge this concept by uh, going through those type of things. So, as of now, you treat that our aim is to have uh, that we have 8 inputs and to encode that into 3 bit data. So, now let us get back to the code. Uh, so, my input is i and my output is o. So, my output is 3 bits encoded data and I am giving 8 bit data. 8 bit data in the sense uh, the input I will be input signal I will be transmitted through one of the line you can consider. So, uh, in which line the input is transmitting that will be taken as I remaining bits will be 0. So, I am using case statement. So, this is obviously behavioral level of abstraction. You should use the keyword always. This star indicates that whenever there is change in inputs, you should execute this case statement. So, in case i, I am giving an 8 bit data The I am representing for ease in hexadecimal representation. So, 8 tick h hexadecimal 0 1 indicates that 8 tick h 0 1 indicates that 0 0 0 0 each thing should be represented in 4 bit 0 0 0 1. So, my data is in this position and remaining all are zeros. Similarly, I am writing all the cases here 8 tick H02 that means 0000 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, like that you write, or else you can also give 8 tick B, 8 tick B, all the 8 bits you can write. So, I am encoding each one with a combination that is uh, 3 output data bits means 0 to 7, 0, 0, 0, 0 to 111. You can uh, give all the combinations to that particular input combination. Now, there should be also default case uh, to avoid unnecessary inter, uh, inferring of latches which will turn this combinational into sequential circuit. So, the complete case statement you should use that is by using default case. Uh, if nothing is given then I want uh, don't care set my output and you are starting with case. So, you should write end case and end module. So, this is how an encoder Verilog code will look like. Let me also explain the test bench. Our agenda in the test bench is to check all the possible combinations. So, I have given all the combinations here of input data that is uh, remaining all zeros and each time I am giving one particular line as high. Now, let us uh, check how it will uh, the timing waveforms so that we will get some idea of how it actually look like. Let me enlarge this. Okay, now you can see here if my input 
is in this particular O of 0, then I am encoding that as 0, 0, 0. And if my input is in first line, I of 1, uh, I mean this line I am making high and remaining all zeros, then I am encoding that particular thing as 0, 0, 1. Like that you can see all different encoding, encoding data you will get at the output. So this is how to write a Verilog code for a uh, an encoder in the next video we are going to see how to write the same for a decoder and you can also try this using if statement also you can check uh, how the difference in architectures that you got implemented and all hope you guys learned something new that's all for this video see you in the next one